Welcome to Friday. Uh, if you're watching on Wednesday, I'm sorry for those people who got lost as I skipped a page there. Hopefully I'll get it right today. Friday, page 79, and that's where I'm going to be sticking with, page 79. Through Christ, let us offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. Together we say, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. From Hebrews chapter 10. We have complete freedom to go into the holy place by the means of the death of Jesus. He opened for us a new way, a living way, through the curtain, through his own body. Since we have a great high priest set over the household of God, let us come near to God with a sincere heart and sure faith, with hearts that have been made clean from a guilty conscience and bodies washed with pure water. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. I'm really glad that that reading is before us this morning from Hebrews chapter 10, because in lots of ways it actually lines up very neatly with what uh, we're going to reflect on from the Nicene Creed. Uh, it is in Christ and through his sacrifice that we are brought into relationship with God. And so as you reflect on that particular passage, it might also help you to think about uh, what we, we think about later in our, in our time together. But for now, uh, I'm going to read for us from Psalm chapter 2, or Psalm 2, and I'm going to be reading from verses 7 uh, six, sorry, 6 through to 11. 6 through to 11. Psalm 2, 6 through to 11. I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I'll proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You'll break them with a rod of iron. You'll dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss the son, or he'll be angry, and your way will lead you to your destruction, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all those who take refuge in him. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together. We pray for your church, Lord. Deliver it from all evil, perfected in your love, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, gather us and all people into your kingdom through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And over the page, we're going to continue in prayer. Create a spirit advocate promised by our Lord Jesus. Increase our faith and help us to walk in the light of your presence to the glory of God the Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, and I'll be reading from verse 36. Acts chapter 2, and beginning at verse 36. Peter is speaking in this uh, passage. He's speaking to a group of people that have gathered around him uh, very early on in the apostolic uh, part of, of his ministry. So Acts chapter 2 verse 36. Peter says, therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this they were cut to the heart, and they said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent, and be baptized every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you, and for your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Well, this is the word of the Lord. Now we're going to uh, join together in the canticle for the Saviour of the world. You'll find that on page 80 of your prayer books. Now you can listen along or you can join with me. Jesus, Saviour of the world, 
Come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our saviour and mighty deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. Amen. We're going to join together in the words of the Nicene Creed, uh, page 117. If you want to turn there, you can uh, join with me in these words of common belief and we'll reflect on one particular line of them at the end. So we say together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, we're going to be looking at, uh, towards the end of that Nicene Creed, uh, the acknowledgement of one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. One baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Now, such an important statement, this one. I think a misunderstanding of this is the heresy of our age, almost as much as a misunderstanding of the Holy Spirit and his work amongst us. Uh, We have people in our society, even in our churches, rejected because of the amount of water used in a ritual, if you want to put it as crassly as that. We have people thinking that they are right with God, no matter what they believe or no matter what they do, because at some stage in their life, perhaps even before they were conscious of it, they were baptised. And we have churches who tie up practical governance, membership with this sacramental symbol of what is a spiritual truth, a merging of what is physical with what is spiritually true. It seems to me to be an increasing problem and not a decreasing one. And we have people afraid of bringing their children to baptism because of a misunderstanding. And we also have people who do it blithely and without true consideration for what's going on. But the Creed, I think, is quite wonderfully clear on its plain reading. Uh, An acknowledgement of one baptism, not two or three or more, depending on which denomination you happen to move from or or go to, uh, or not one or two or three baptisms, dependent as if it's uh, on some kind of special new work by the Holy Spirit. No, it's one baptism and for what purpose? Not a new experience of God. Not a a membership into the administrative organisation of the church. Not even an acknowledgement of your understanding of great truths. But one baptism 
for the forgiveness of sins. Now that is something that only comes from trusting in Christ and his death on the cross on our behalf, isn't it? It happens for us once when we put our trust in Christ. The sacrament or the ritual of baptism is actually a sign of that one event. A person may experience that sign as an adult or as a child in a river or in a pool or at a font. But there is only one place where the forgiveness of sins is found and that is at the foot of the cross. And the sign either points forward to it or back to it. Now John the Baptist spoke about repentance and the sign of baptism was there. The Apostle Peter spoke about repentance and the cross of Jesus in Acts chapter 2 as we just looked at it and, and baptism was there. The Ethiopian eunuch, the jailer's whole family and Lydia's too, and I assume all the children of those families, both of those in Acts chapter 16. You see, baptism is a symbol of what Christ has done on the cross and it is for people to see and acknowledge that great event. It's for them and indeed for all of those who God will call. The church doesn't dispense grace with baptism and neither should it seek to control behaviour with it. It is about Christ and him crucified for the forgiveness of sins. Now as I baptise a baby or as I baptise an adult, this is true for me. My prayer is that whoever that person is, that they might, by God's work in their lives, come to know Christ and the forgiveness of their sins. That they may come to know Christ as their Lord and Saviour. And my prayer continues that Christians around them, whether their family or their friends or their youth group or whoever, might take seriously their obligation to encourage and model and teach these things to these people. That repentance and faith matter and that baptism might, by God's grace, be an effective symbol of that divine truth. That the earthly might be something that points to the heavenly. That the physical might point towards effectively what is spiritually important and crucial for us as Christian people to grasp in God's good grace and by his work and will. For me, that means that I become less important at baptism than perhaps many ministers might see themselves. But it becomes very important that those people gathered around understand what they're doing, what they're promising, what they're saying, whether it's on behalf of a child or on their own behalf, that they understand that it's pointing to Jesus and his death on the cross and nothing else. One baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We're going to uh, continue to spend some time in prayer now after reflecting on that particular line of the, the creed. And so if you'll turn with me to page 80, and I, I think I've got the page right today. Uh, page 80. Um, Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. The Lord's Prayer. You'll find that on page 48 if you want to look at a copy there. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth so that they may return into the way of righteousness. Grant to all who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's service that they may renounce those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the morning collect. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'll turn forward just a couple of pages to page 84, you'll see the prayers that will follow there. Uh, page 84. Gracious Lord and Father, you have given us in Christ a merciful Saviour to present to you the world in all its need. And so, Heavenly Father, we give you great thanks. We give you great thanks for the presence of Christ in our weakness and also in those times where we're going well, in our strength. We give you thanks for the power of Christ to transform our suffering, our inconvenience, our difficulty into glory. And we pray that you'd be doing that for us now. We give thanks, Heavenly Father, for all ministries of healing, for ministries of prayer for healing and for ministries of physical healing. We pray, Lord, that you'd be at the, in the midst of it all, bringing relief from suffering. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for all agencies of relief all around the world. We, we pray especially for those who are seeking to bring medical assistance to those who can't afford it. And so we pray, Heavenly Father, for those agencies that are working in the North Kigesi Diocese of Uganda. We pray for them in a special way as they seek to bring relief to our brothers and sisters there. We give you thanks for everyone who sets people free from fear and pain and distress. We give you thanks for those who uh, are caring for those disadvantaged people throughout the world through mission and service. We give you thanks for the assurance that your mercy knows no limit. And we give you thanks for the privilege of sharing your work of renewal through prayer and suffering and joy. And Lord, we do continue to pray for all those who are suffering, the hungry and the refugees, those poor countries who are without the resources that we have to battle the COVID-19 virus. We pray for prisoners, for those who are persecuted. Uh, again, Lord, we seem to see an increase of persecution at the moment with the COVID-19 virus being used as an excuse for that. And we pray that you change the hearts of those who bring that suffering to others. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are without work, for those who are without homes, for those who bring grief to others, we pray that you'd change them. Uh, we pray that if we're a part of that, you'd change us. And we pray for those who try and bring relief and care to those in need, and we pray especially for our missionary organisations who are bringing the relief of the gospel and the care of the good news of Jesus into the lives of people. Please, Lord, bless those who are seeking to do that all around the world, in darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy. Help us to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're turning back to page 81. But before we conclude our service, I'd like to just bring a couple of prayer points from our church family matters to us in addition to those prayers that we've already made. And so uh, looking at those prayers, we, we give thanks, Heavenly Father, that although the current situation of isolation is difficult, we give you thanks that it does give us opportunities to rethink and evaluate, to reprioritize and to seek to do things differently. We give you thanks that despite the, the news focus and the immediate inconveniences, we know that this season will pass and we give you thanks for holding it in your hands. 
We pray for us as a church that we would be re-centred, recommitted, and that we would take each other and our gatherings much less for granted in the future. We pray for those who are losing contact with church, that they would experience Jesus in a special way and grow even in these strange times. We pray for business owners and employees in Armidale especially, struggling for certainty at the moment. We pray that all of them might find their hope in Jesus. And we pray for a revival, a revival of genuine Christian faith here in Armidale and throughout the world. We pray that you might grant us in your grace and consideration for us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, may the Lord be with you. Let us together praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May peace be to us all and love with faith from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a great day.